Hi everybody, I'm Lori with Behavior Education and welcome to my dilemma of the day. We have feral cats in our neighborhood and my husband and I have actually trapped six of them and had them spayed and neutered. However, last night, um, some of the cats from the feral cat colony got a hold of a garter snake on our ranch and we have found several dead garter snakes that presumably the cats have killed and half eaten. And this time we caught them in the act and we were able to get the snake away from the cats. So I thought the snake was dead. It wasn't moving, it looked dead. I thought we were too late. Um, however, when my husband picked it up, um, it tongue flicked very slowly once or twice, even though it was pretty limp. So um, it was still alive and I brought it inside the house and I set it up in a tub with some heat and some water and a hide thinking I was just gonna have to see it, if it made it. I, I looked over the snake and I didn't see any wounds where the cats had actually punctured the skin yet. Um, however, cats are pretty um, savage and you're never sure if there's internal damage that has occurred even though you're not seeing any external signs. So um, today, which is July 26th, the snake survived the night. Here it is. Um, oh, I'm gonna try to, oh, I just dumped the water. Let me take the water out so that I can turn the bin over and show you the snake. So the snake seems to be doing pretty well. Um, it's actually moving around the enclosure. There was a mess to clean up this morning where it had eliminated, it had been in its water. Um, I've had the snake out and checked it over once and it got quite active this afternoon. So now, um, it's some kind of garter snake, either a Western ribbon snake or a common garter snake. I'm not sure, I'm not a garter snake connoisseur. But now here's my dilemma. Do I release the snake back out to where it came from? Do I relocate the snake somewhere else or do I keep the snake here at Behavior Education? Well, here's my train of thought. I am not an advocate of captive um, wild caught animals. So none of the snakes, which we have 40 something snakes here, none of those snakes were wild caught. They've all been captive bred and born with the exception of one that was captive born, but um, was bred from a wild caught mother and a farm hatched father. And that's one of my Morelia spilota harrisoni, one of my poplin carp pythons. But all of the other snakes here, including the ones that are indigenous to Colorado, our bull snake, our Western hognose snake, our corn snakes, they were all captive born and bred because I just am not an advocate of taking wild animals out of our ecosystem and bringing them into our homes. I think that they play a role in um, ecology and that they're necessary in our ecosystem. They all have a place. So my dilemma is what to do with this snake. Do I release it back to where I know it belongs? I know where the cats got it from. And my first instinct says, yes, that's what I need to do because it's playing some type of role or function in our, in our ecosystem right here in our ranch and I feel that it needs to go back to where it came from. Um, the second thing is garter snakes have been known to live semi-communally or and have social interactions with other garter snakes. And so it, it may be that it's living with other garter snakes out there and removing one individual from that communal unit can be detrimental in other species. I don't know how detrimental it would be um, in snakes other than if it's a potential breeding female or breeding male, um, then that would be detrimental to our population of garter snakes here. My other option is to translocate it somewhere out of the range where I know these feral cats roam. However, in at least four recent scientific papers that I've read, um, snakes that are relocated, so these papers were about translocation of various different snake species, they did not fare well and the mortality rate on species that were translocated was very high um, and they didn't survive very long. And that could be for a number of reasons. Some of them tried to get back to their original um, habitat and were killed in the process of doing that. Sometimes when they get translocated, they may not know um, where to find food, where to find refuge. Um, so they're unable to, 
forage for food and find hides adequately. They don't know the predators that are native to that local little area, and so they can succumb to predation more easily. But overall, in all these papers I read, um, translocating snakes, um, we need to take a second look at that because their survival rate is not very long or very high when we translocate them to where they've been living to another habitat. So I don't really think that that's an appropriate thing to do. If I keep the snake here in our facility, um, it will be safe. However, again, I'm taking it out of the local ecosystem. I'm taking it away from any other snakes that it's living with socially or communally. And whatever job it was doing in our environment, it's no longer doing. And it's also used to living in the wild. And I don't know how well it would do um, under human care. So I feel like the best thing to do is to release the snake back to where it came from. However, um, I'm worried about the cats getting it again and potentially harming it or killing it. And some of you may think, well, let nature take its course. But that isn't nature taking its course because Felis sylvestris, which is our domestic cat, is not native to North America. They're an invasive species here. They originally are from the Near East and Egypt and the domestic cats that we have came here to North America with people and rats and grains and foods, and they're not indigenous here. So they're highly detrimental to our um, native habitats and our native ecosystems. They kill numerous amphibians and reptiles and birds and small mammals, um, more so than what the ecosystem can support sometimes. And so it's super, super important, people, that you don't let your cats outside and that you spay and neuter them so that if they get outside, they're not reproducing and forming these feral cat colonies. Um, so that's my moral dilemma today. Do I translocate the snake outside of the range of these cats? Do I put the snake back where I know it belongs and take the chance that the cats could get it again? Or do I keep it here at Behavior Education? And I haven't decided yet. I am going to keep it here one more night just to make sure that it's healthy and strong and that I feel like if I do release it back that it has a good chance. I'm hoping that this interaction with the cats has scared it enough that now it knows the smell of the cats and to flee from that smell and to stay away from the cats and that if I release it back to the same location where it lives it's going to know where to find food and where to find hides and possibly have other garter snakes that's living with. So I'm definitely leaning towards that, but I do want to give it another 24 hours to make sure that it's um, doing well before I release it back out. And just to give you guys one more look at it, I will do that. It's a very, very beautiful, beautiful snake. And um, it's, it's doing much, much better today. Last night, like I said, it was totally limp and we thought it was completely dead. Um, but today it's moving around. It is eliminating. I've had to clean the enclosure already three times. Apparently garter snakes um, eliminate a lot and they're messy because it's got its water everywhere. So um, thanks for watching and I will update you and let you know what I ultimately do with this little garter snake. Everybody have a great day and be kind to wildlife. Okay, so apparently garter snakes are really, really messy um, because this snake's only been in here overnight after I rescued it from the feral cats who were trying to eat it. And it's got its little tub a complete mess already. Wow.